Yo, I tell Elena to wake me up at 3.50. She says, all right, three, uh, 4.15, I wake up, and she's not even home. Don't put this on her. That's yeah. not her job. Yeah, I just worked. I want to take a quick nap before I came here. Do you not have an and alarm? She, and she fucking... No, she was my alarm. Damn, Ted. She ditched me. Is that divorce? Divorceable? <laughs> yeah. I actually, yeah. A dish on an alarm? Yeah, I think so. There's no trust now. I got no trust in her. We should do that as like a parody where you can like pretend you're Kanye and have like the breakdown during the divorce. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Elena won't let me see Hunter. Oh, God. <laughs> do like a viral video. <laughs> I went back to the house to grab my Nintendo Switch. She said it was hers that I was stealing. <laughs> she called the cops on me, man. Oh, man. that Did you see, uh, I think it was her cousin that was like that was that texted him it's yeah. like like serious shit and it's like by the way uh do I get the easy hook up or anything like <laughs> dude no, uh, mid conversation wait what he, her cousin texted Kanye for a, a Yeezy like, hookup they were like talking about like the serious shit that's going on and it's like like having like a real conversation and then I don't know where she's just like uh is it safe to buy Yeezys from this site <laughs> or something like that <laughs> no yeah she was straight up is it safe to buy uh, Yeezys on StockX <laughs> and Kanye's <laughs> like don't talk to me about Yeezys right now bro <laughs> Well, the That's Kanye documentary do. is coming up, so maybe this is his idea of building hype. I, I feel like whenever it comes from Kanye West or Kim Kardashian, you can't believe any, any side. Literally because nothing. they'll do anything for, for press, for show, but... Hey, I gotta say, as a new father, I do agree with him you're not with, a father the, yet. with the North stuff on TikTok. You're not a father yet. <laughs> you've become... <laughs> yeah, you're not even a father yet, and you've become the boomer father. That's just how I feel. You know, you just you think yeah. differently. Yeah, yeah. Yo, three years you in, are such gonna... a hypocrite. If your if your uh, future daughter comes on like three years old, starts making TikToks, gaining traction, bringing in bucks, you're gonna be like, "Fuck yeah!" Yeah, okay. you're and if she's turn not into Joe Jackson, and if she's not, what every not. fucking creeper and Tom is gonna be on there? No, creeper and Tom. You know what I mean? Creeper and Tom. <laughs> that could be an adult Tom show. Joe and Creeper. I don't know. Yeah, could be the modern day Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> I hope your daughter's the next Charlie De- D'Amelio. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. You sh- that's how quickly you'll change your tone. Yeah, but if she's not, then what's the point of being on there? But Charlie's getting creeped on. That's also, a good lesson. That's a good way to raise your I'll kid. Don't that. do anything unless you're very good at it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You're also going to be one of those parents who just stuffs an iPod in that iPad in that kid's face nah, by the time uh, she's four. Dude, I was hey, at no, the dinner. I s- I'm swearing by that. It's not happening. I was, oh, dude. I was at the dinner and like, I, this kid's <laughs> next to us, like, they had the iPad out. And I was looking at them and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, would you rather that or have your kid act like fucking shit at the? At no, I think out. Uh, that could definitely be used out in public. Yeah, I think an out in public thing. Dude, to, people just give their kids ex- their phone to a certain extent, but I don't. Give I'm not being phone? a parent that has the kid screaming and the. I can't do it. You know, how people say like, you know, you know, it, it's your turn. You know, you you sat through kids crying. What if you have a uh, shitty? I can't kid? be. I'll what, be too. What do you uh, do? What? You just have a shitty kid. Yeah, like a Babadook kid. Oh. Just fucking shitty. Annoying. Or like from, uh, you see The Lost Daughter? I feel like I'll know that. Yeah. I feel like shitty I'll know that. I was yeah. watching that and I'm like, yo, fuck kids. If I have a kid like that, I'm just gonna... <laughs> you just can't go out. I don't know. You know? I, be I feel like I'll be consciously, and I'll consciously know if my kid's bad or not, and we just won't go out in public. I can't imagine a kid, you and Elena making a kid that's annoying. But I don't I think like, it's like, yeah, some kids that. are just shitty. You I know? appreciate that. You know? I don't, yeah, I don't, think, I don't think they have a shitty kid in them. But maybe. <laughs> Hello, no. everybody. <laughs> Out of all those sperms we, like, you got in you, like... What are the odds? 4% are probably just super shitty. Probably got a serial killer on there, and maybe a president. You know, that's the, odd, that's the risk you run. I think I have a pro soccer player coming up. Nice. <laughs> hey, man, U.S. soccer on the up and up. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd 2 Podcast. I am Bo Oliver, joined here today with Aaron, the Nerd 2 Monkey, and Teddy. And we are here to talk about the world of Hollywood. We've got some news about trailers. We've got first images for some upcoming movies and some fun stories overall. Of course, you can listen to this podcast on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Buzzsprout. Check out that link and uh, follow us on social media at Nerd Soup, Bo Soup, Nerd Soup, Monkey, Teddy, Nerd Soup. Good podcast last week, I thought. Sorry, uh, it's my best friend, Tell. Getting me from both <laughs> devices. This is why you switched to Good Apple, start, right? Huh? Yeah. Shake up Nash on here. Yeah, that's actually Nash phoning in. Nash, <laughs> what do you have to uh, do in a preview for Super Bowl Sunday, actually, Nash, on Thursday? So he will be back in the host chair. So you guys can uh, just sit back and let him crumble under all the pressure. Just let that man Wait, sweat this? under all the lights. That's uh, mean. Thursday. What do you mean that's mean? That's what you guys actually did on the last podcast. You're just throwing him back into the fire. You, you did. Worst case, it's him. I, I, ain't, I, ain't, I can't step up. Like no, that. actually, you know what? Uh, 
I expected it from Aaron, but from yeah. you, the last time Nash was on a podcast, you helped move things along. You got oh, us to yeah. the next, but you didn't do that at all in the last mm-hmm. one. It felt like you guys l- just fed Nash to the Lions. If he was going to host, let him host. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that we got to carry... Uh, it's more or less on you on for throwing shells. him to the Wolves like that. If anything, you threw him to the Wolves, not us. Well, I'm very... I'm like LeBron in January, <laughs> where I let the teammates... I take a step back. You guys got to figure this out. Call me in April. That'll be Thursday. I'm going to have Nash here before like you guys Russell record that. fucking trade me already. <laughs> <laughs> Russell Westbrook? Yeah. No, that's got to be... Uh, well, no, I wouldn't say Teddy's Westbrook. Teddy's more like AD. Mm. Love it. Great when he's on the floor, but... He gets hurt a lot. <laughs> yeah, he's always injured. <laughs> Yeah, uh, when I'm out there, I'm giving you 100. How's life? You know, how you guys doing? Not a horrible day at work today. Really? Raining and cold. <laughs> it, was all, it was freezing out all day today. Yeah, no, it was snow here. in the morning and then it turned to rain, yeah, right? I, I got to come here to a freezing icebox of a room. <laughs> hey, for a studio. It's going to be nice and toasty. It's a bit chilly in here. No regard for anyone else coming in. I well, was, uh, it was either be suffocated from the smell of marijuana and cigars or get some air flowing. I think I'd rather the smell. Okay. That's why I come here. I try to get a little contact eye. Well, it's more for Teddy, because I know he doesn't like that smell. You, I mean. I'll come in with the, with the shirt above my nose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does that a lot. You were wearing a mask before the panty. <laughs> Disrespected me and shit. <laughs> All right, let's just get to the first story. How about that? Yeah. Panty. Last podcast, we talked about The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, the Amazon show that is coming out. We saw all those posters of people's torsos and hands. No character information, but we've got some castings. And now we're going to get a trailer, and that trailer will be released during Super Bowl Sunday. February 13th makes sense, you know? We've we've talked about it on this pod that we haven't seen any motion pictures. We've seen still images, but now we're going to get our first taste. And, you know, we've, like I said, we've talked about this too. Highest budget for a first season ever. It's not even fucking remotely close. I, I, I can't that wait is, for this. I want to see what, what that budget produced. That's still mind-blowing for the first season. It's not even like this, game, this show, like, was a big hit in the first season, and now they're going to throw the bag at it. They got the bag from the jump. So I've made it's a prediction like about. this before. It's probably the most infamous statement I've ever made on this podcast. <laughs> that season eight would be good because how can't they make it good? How yeah. could they mess it up? It's going to be so big and so epic. I'm feeling like that for this Amazon <laughs> show as well, where at the very least it's going to be epic. So you if, put the mush on. You, you put the botch on season eight. Is that what happened? I think, yeah, I put the kibosh. Is that what is it? Yeah. That's what it is? Yeah. I think. Well, I think film Twitter can thank the pod for this, right? For what? For this? For the trailer? This trailer? Didn't you say that? I did pod? call out Bezos, and I like. Oh yeah, I forgot about he that. Definitely heard, and he was like, "You see, China reach uh, change the ending to Fight Club." Really? Yeah, they put back the original ending. I think they can thank our podcast for that too. Look at us. Let's make it moves. What should I we? Know what we should had we? Such, such international <laughs> pull. Yeah. What should we do now? Nothing too big. Margot Robbie should probably date like someone low to the ground. Yeah. Podcaster. Wow, Ooh. thank you. Hooking it up for me. <laughs> oh, you talking about yourself? No, I was talking about you. Oh, nice. I'm a good friend. Uh, well, Teddy's about to get divorced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, you, you don't deserve Margot. Why is that? Because you've been the ladies' man your entire life. Then you end your life with Margot? That's kind of like, I hang, my, I hang the cleats up. <laughs> <you know? laughs> what? <laughs> Drive out into the sunset. <laughs> you know, I'd like to see her in this Lord of the Rings show, actually. If that actually happened, then I would drive off a cliff. Like, <laughs> what, you know, I the sunset. Slip? Yeah, I'll Thurman Luis myself. Thelma. Yeah, I'll just be in the yeah, passenger seat. Yeah, yeah. I'll <laughs> call shotgun on that. Um, but yeah, I, no, I... I still can't wrap my head around this, man. It's $465 ridiculous. million. Dollars. This, a movie budget hasn't even come close to this. It's basically what I said what I would do if I was ever a billionaire and just fund, like, my... <laughs> projects i think would be neat and that's kind of what they're doing over here but obviously with the lord of the rings name like it's built into it but uh, like even star wars didn't even go this big when it came to uh, their yeah, shows they're, they're and what movie. they're doing right like, yeah yeah i don't know if you necessarily have to because with shows like mandalorian and everything like that you can keep it more uh contained but this one they're gonna expand a universe that's <laughs> It's pretty hard to top what they already did, but they're going to go for it. And yeah, just so I just want to see what this trailer looks like, what the vibe of the show is, what the feel is, because um, I think we all agree here. It's probably the best trilogy of all time. And, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, even like, right, yeah, the Hobbits weren't all that great, but I don't think. From a movie standpoint. Yeah, I think this is just a completely three. different beast. And 
I think from this trailer, I don't think it, I don't want them to give any way. Like I said, just get the vibe, see what it's going. What's this money going to? And just gear up as we head towards the release date for this, because I hope I hope this like it's easy to say, oh, it's Lord of the Rings is going to do well. But who knows? Stranger things have happened in the past. But I, I, I really hope this is just a massive weekly thing that everyone can kind of get together and enjoy. Imagine while it's it sucks. Shut up. Imagine. It's always a possibility. <laughs> We're, I mean, we have uh, some movies coming up over the next few months that we think are just going to be surefire hits. The Batman. But there's always a chance that that's not so good. I mean, I don't want that to happen, obviously. But it, like I said, with the budget, at the end of the day, you're going to see something, at least I think, that we've never seen before. Because no movie has come close to this. I think the highest budgets are... They come close to 400 and then you factor in marketing and stuff like that. But it, Amazon... It's not like they brought the biggest names to this series. So there are no huge salaries when it comes to actors or actresses. A lot of the money is just going towards things like travel right. and practical set pieces and stuff like that. So that's the thing too. Like when you know, when you hear big budget, you automatically assume like, oh, they're gonna CGI, be crazy CGI crazy. special yeah. effects. And I don't get that at all from this. So right. like you said, it's gonna be a lot of the travel, a lot of the practical sets and just hopefully using that money to just keep it uh practical, but you know, there are ways you can man- manipulate practical settings into creating something like hopefully we've never seen before on TV. Yeah, but that you know, first look they gave us. Just renting a helicopter, getting some shots, that all costs money. It all adds up. Yeah. Traveling around a natural landscape, getting to certain areas to get the right shot, like that takes effort, time, and money. So hopefully it's just, uh, and also too, if it's, I don't know how long the season is or how long each episode is, you would assume maybe if it's your standard hour-long, 10-episode run, like, just putting that into every single episode, spreading it out. Unless there is something where there's just a massive thing that we're not expecting towards the end, like an epic battle, something along the lines of Battle of Winterfell, I was going to say, but... Well, yeah, when when you put it like that... Do Helm's Deep, keep it it in-house. When you put it like that, if it is 10 episodes, that's like three movies. I mean, then, yeah, the the math does kind of add up. You know, at least 600, 500 million... I mean, we could look at the first season as three movies. Yeah. Like, we're just being treated to three movies to introdu- introduce us to this prequel series around surrounding a story that is so fascinating. And I, I think that they can even take the approach of... We have that the f- opening of Fellowship, and it tells the story of Sauron's defeat, that maybe that wasn't such an accurate depiction of those events. It was maybe a bit more complicated getting to that point. Obviously, it's a condensed version because they want to get onto the story about Frodo and the, the ring destroying it, all that stuff. But now we're going to get the origin of the rings. We're going to see um, the human personification of Sauron instead of just the eye and the okay. mystical, spiritual presence that he was in the uh, original trilogy. So there's a lot of fascinating avenues here to make a, a dark fantasy series with the natural intrigue of being part of the Lord of the Rings franchise, bringing fans in. I don't know how this e- is even profitable for Amazon. I don't know how successful this <laughs> has to be. Hey, possibly I mean, profitable for you, like. hey, it's, it's exposure to the, to the Amazon, man. Like, it feels like, and I'm not saying this in a series. negative way, like a five hundred million dollar commercial for our streaming service. This, it's not about making money off of this series, but it's about purging as many people as they can from the other streaming services. Yeah, I, I wonder really, how much did Game of Thrones help HBO? I mean, HBO was established before Game of Thrones, but it was also HBO pirated definitely, a lot. Yeah. That show made HBO so much fucking money, and season 8 cost them so much money on <laughs> it's merchandise. The long, it's the I long got, run, I got man. HBO like, it's just to yeah, watch. It's a marathon for them, not a sprint. No, it, it is like, uh, there's a big soccer player, um, Holland, and everyone is, he's 20 years old, he's supposed to be the next best, best thing, but nobody knows how much they're supposed to pay for him. Because it's like 200, 300, 400. Like Realistically, they should pay close to a billion. <laughs> yeah, like NFTs. <laughs> because of the long impact. You know, if he goes to a club that maybe doesn't have the international appeal of a Man City, Man U, and makes them an international powerhouse, you know, your club goes up billions of dollars, the merchandise you could sell. So it's like, it, it's hard to gauge the number they should throw at this. And I think Amazon's doing a similar thing where it's like, okay, we'll just, <laughs> just throw a billion five, at it. <laughs> half a billion. Right. Let's And let's see if this, in the long run, if this becomes one of the biggest shows in the world. Because it... Does that make you think that it could... It's not going to suck, but does that make you think that there could be a chance that it sucks, that it's just like... They're putting all this money just to, like, make it look like they're doing good. Well, it's like, we haven't heard any, um... You know what I mean? It's like like the, the real shitty kid in basketball who buys all the good gear. <laughs> it shows up he, with the arm sleeve, the yeah, headband. Yeah. Uh, no, there I is, mean... There's no huge huge. But we haven't heard any or stories actress. coming out from the, I like from that, the production. I like, it, I like it, too, but it's not like it's... Same thing with Game of Thrones, really. Yeah. 
We haven't heard any negative stories out of the production. So there hasn't been any setbacks, there hasn't been any firings where showrunners leave and come and go and all this other stuff. It, it seems like it's been a clean production and they're on track to release in September. Um, so that's promising. And also it's just, you're coming off of Hobbit, which a lot of people didn't love. So you have some, it's similar to The Force Awakens, where it's this will begin to make things right sort of situation. Yeah. So... I think a lot, of, even if it is good, if it's not great, people are going to love it because it's a return to form almost. Right. But if it's good, this could be monumental. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if it comes out and it's like a nine out of ten type of show. Yeah, but is this like gonna... a, just a great drama, a great epic? This could change the fucking landscape of TV. Is this going to set the stage for how much is going to cost for a show now? Like, is right. this like if be? they put the pressure on people and they're like, "Here's our great show." Yeah, I don't. And it's I like, mean, you've seen it's like inflation for houses. Yeah. <laughs> if you look no, at... it's like when the Clippers were bought for two billion. It's like all of a sudden now other franchises they go <laughs> up, but it's different here because. I don't know. What's what's your point, Aaron? Well, I'm saying like within the industry, every everybody probably knows what the return is on. Maybe it's not publicly released, but I'm sure if it comes out and they make fucking bank on this, Netflix will get wins, Hulu will get wins. And if it doesn't turn out to be as profitable, maybe they reevaluate. But like you said, like it's more getting eyes to the streaming servers as a whole. Um, but Amazon, like this year, if you think about the, what they're releasing with that, then you have Miss Maisel coming back, Invincible, The Boys, like... Not only are these like Shit. big shows that like could be and all have been award contenders, like they cast a very wide net of quality sh- television and series. So, like I think it's like just by the name Amazon and by ver- like having Amazon Prime. I think I don't even know anybody who doesn't even have Amazon Prime at this point, just for like shopping. For real. And, and now they just have access to all this different material and streaming services. Uh, added into what they already use it's like i think it's like the perfect platform to get something uh, as much eyeballs as possible on there this man's a genius bezos yeah i mean fuck bezos but also props to bezos for putting this much money into it i mean maybe he, <laughs> he could put his money where his mouth is man. right maybe he should pay his his factory workers a bit more <laughs> yeah, you true. know the people working in the warehouse but uh but like you yeah, know. this guy over here. <laughs> but it's not us. Yeah. Yeah. Season two is probably going to cost a lot more. <laughs> you think season two hits a billion? <laughs> I think it could be a situation. I mean, we have to just wait and see. It's like, like Aaron said, if they figure out that it's profitable, why not? You know, let's let's run it back. Or if it's if it does its job of, like I said, purging these other subscribers from these other streaming services, maybe they cut back on that budget a bit. Yeah. I could see that yeah. naturally happening, especially if it's good and the actors become stars. Because then they're going to be like, hold up. Yeah. Bump this. I mean, Bezos has more. the money for some bumps, not for the warehouse uh, people, obviously, but for the, <laughs> yeah, but for this, yeah. Yeah, for the big actors. For Reacher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for Reacher. And it's probably a stupid question, but is there a source material for this show, like the show that they're making? There is. There, there's. Uh, it's and called the it Similarian. It's, it's basically in like an encyclopedia All right. of Lord of the, the Rings lore, but it's very detailed. I mean, Tolkien. You know, he his writing is very detailed. His his world yeah, is very they're going vivid off a and rich. On a Five hundred million dollars. No, show. no, no, no. There's there's story here. There's right. there's tons and tons of story here, and it's the origin. You know, like I said, we got the little taste of it in the beginning of Fellowship, and now we're gonna get the whole thing. And I, it feels like, you know, a different world. So it's not like it's it's just retreading the same story. Like we had the complaint yeah. about the Game of Thrones prequel that was gonna be, you know, them fighting the White Walkers the first time. It's like. We don't want to see that shit. It's so similar to the story we already got. This is a little bit different. Mm-hmm. There are more rings at play. Uh, we, we'll probably get some more information about some of these, you know, different groups like the elves and the dwarves and all the the subcultures nice. in Middle Earth. So stuff like that. And I'm I'm so excited for this. I think this is my most anticipated thing of the year. And for some reason, I don't feel like. Do we get Legos? <laughs> they gave it to <laughs> us in the Hobbit for no Wait, reason. Wait, isn't he isn't he alive during this time? Aren't they like thousands and thousands of years old? Yeah, but I don't know. Maybe uh, I don't know his age. Kind of joking, but now, I'm ha- now I want Legos. No, nah. they they <laughs> definitely try to shoehorn him into the Hobbit. And I was I was actually thinking, it's like I don't feel like I was about to say like I don't, it's not like Star Wars to me where you're like let's get C three PO and R two <laughs> in Rogue One for no reason. It's like I don't think they'll have that, but then I remember, yeah, they did already did that with Legolas. But yeah, it's like, uh, I oh, mean, let's obviously, go. We what's haven't... this little town here? Let's stop to get some rest in the fucking Shire. <laughs> yeah. Even probably though, I don't even know if the Shires. I don't know. Well, maybe they'll they'll stray away. And from Then Legolas that. joins a journey. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, I want Legolas to be the main character of this. <laughs> Give me a Legolas spinoff. 
Every kid loved Legolas. Man. I know, but now even like when I watch him now, it's like it's he's not cool, even like man. in my top five he's of characters. <laughs> no, he's not. Yeah, not even close. Back in the day, it's like really? how fast he can do the bow. That's cool. He's um, he's the, like I guess, the. Yeah. Um, I think that is why I like him. He's like the Harry Styles, you know. He's a pretty boy. Yeah. He's the leader of the group. He's the one that's going to yeah, stand Harry's out like the, the best most. Now, damn, yeah. you're just taking shots at Zane and Paul, <laughs> Ringo. Cool. Yes, Paul <laughs> Direction. Uh, Brian. <laughs> it always goes back to the Beatles with you. Brian Wilson. There you go, Beach Boys. Yeah, Harry's like the main. Yeah, bad comparison. Guy. Bad comparison. He's like um, like someone who's just pretty and stands out for being pretty. He's kind of like Odell on the Rams. You know, not the best player. Big game. Yeah, he's been getting better from the last couple like of weeks. Me here. Yeah, he's he's starting to look like old old. Come on, I know, just come on, make one. He's more it. like um, it's like me here, like Mick Jagger, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like Teddy here. All right, let's move on to the next story, Lord of the Rings. We're all excited for that. Definitely. First look at Jamie Foxx, John Boyega, and Toyona Paris. Toyona Paris in they cloned Tyrone. Did you guys see this image? No, you set me up for you sabotaged me. Didn't put a link for the. First image. I did not put the, a link for the image. Well, they look amazing, actually. Their get up, it's it's got like a futuristic seventy vibes, uh, 70s vibe to it. Just look up John Boyega on Twitter. I did. I can find it. Okay. Um, it's and like uh, it's six pictures. It is a sci-fi movie. It's about a mystery. So apparently, they team up together and they're trying to to solve some sort of mystery. Uh, their character names are pretty funny: Slick Charles, Yo Yo, and Fontaine. Mm. And uh, Boyega compared it to his big screen debut attack the block a movie that i haven't seen but have heard great things about it uh definitely want to watch that soon yes that's it (laughs) yeah they're cooling yeah i'm a big vibes guy yeah for real like if a movie has just the right vibe i can definitely i'll just just give me enough intrigue to like want to watch it and definitely from this little like undercover brother well the premise itself i mean i love jamie fox is uh he's got such range and he can play this character so well he can be the slick talking trying to get one over on everybody. He's so good at this that role. This man can role. play he, any character he, he really, play. Yeah. And he's like, he's in a lot, but I feel like he hasn't really been in a lot recently. If that makes sense. It's like, what was the last Jamie Foxx that like, he's been great in roles, but like nothing Jamie Foxx would make main in role. terms of like, I don't know. Yeah, he was in Just Mercy, yeah. supporting role. But I feel like the last Fox performance that really stood out to me was Django. Even uh, Baby Driver, like I thought he was really good, and like the horrible actually, boss, he was very good in and the horrible Driver. bosses movies. But it wasn't like he was a great part of it, but he wasn't like the main part, and it wasn't like a standout performance, like you said, like a Django or a Ray. White did House Down. The... Oh fuck! How did I forget that? <laughs> um, Olympus is falling. Did you see it was eight nine two? Yes, On yes, Sundance. I did. Uh, I, I I didn't actually get John to see John Boyega, that. Michael Kenneth Williams. Yeah, I didn't get to see that one. How it was, was good. It was based on a true story. Um, Michael Soul. Kenneth Williams. It was sad huh? to see him in his final role. He was in Soul. He was the... A... Yeah, yeah. Well, I think Jamie Foxx has done a good job, and John Boyega was really good in that. So I'm, I'm happy yeah. that he's getting roles now, because it felt like for a little while there, he was going to be blacklisted by Hollywood because of how, how outspoken he was about his treatment from Disney and the way he felt about being sidelined in those Star Wars movies. So for him to be now starring in this alongside two great performers. I mean, Tayona Paris was, she's had herself quite a couple of years here. She was so good in Candyman. She was great in WandaVision as Monica Rambeau. And, um, fuck, I totally forgot how I was going to bring this all together. Oh, Jamie Foxx, he's done such a good job, I think, with his career of not always having to be the leading man. He'll take a supporting role. He'll play the villain. He'll play comic relief in something like Horrible Bosses. And then when the leading role presents itself like a movie like this that I think is perfect for him, he takes it. And he he usually delivers great performances, man. Like I said, people always joke that he's the most talented man in, alive because he sings and makes music and yeah, he I acts. Mean, His true talent is acting. It's like yeah. Da Vinci. Da Vinci's a painter. So, Fox, modern day Da Vinci. I always forget that like singing is like a third thing in his repertoire. A comedian. He's just really good at singing. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Gold Digger? fucking classic i do love gold digger glad to hear he was good in that because he really like besides detroit well, i don't even really and obviously the star Pacific wars Rim too. oh yeah true how could i forget that was his uh post star wars i'm about to become a movie star <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but yeah like you said like with that whole disney thing i feel like so, so long ago but it really wasn't yeah, it breaks my heart what happened to him because he came into the star wars franchise 
that the way he promoted the Force Awakens, there was so much love, there was so much excitement and joy from him. All you got was positive vibes from the guy, and he just kept getting beaten back by, like I said, being sidelined in the movies, fans being negative about his character. It, it felt like, like I said, like he was going to just be pushed aside, almost like it feels like um, Ray Fisher is going to be. Right, uh, and yeah. I hope that he's an actor because he's a tremendous talent as well. Well, it's a little bit like because we really haven't heard much from the rest of the cast concerning this. Everyone in the Justice League, or has been a part of that, seems to be very on side with Ray Fisher. Yeah, that's a good point. I think that there hasn't been that sort of camaraderie behind Boyega mm-hmm. with his complaints. But you know, when, when Star Wars is such a beast of its own because Daisy Ridley, the backlash she received was terrible, and the same with Kelly Marie Tran. So mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like so many of these actors that were in these new Star Oscar Wars movies Isaac have their own fucking. <sighs> came out of that clean juke through the hole <laughs> found the open <laughs> lane and took off and he, was, to everyone. he was doing the <laughs> dune sand walking <laughs> just fucking ginobili ink through all that shit oh, that's a, that's what happens with star wars in the first go around it was harrison ford now it's it's oscar isaac <laughs> dude the mark like i was so excited to watch that after you were like oh like the luke scene coming back from book of boba fett like the cgi looks good then i looked on the internet and i'm like i don't even want to watch this anymore dude like the takes were in people are insane for something that's like n- inconsequential that's just supposed to be like a cool moment in a show for star wars fans but then it turned into like like, and I like the sentiment of like, oh, I love those movies as a kid and seeing that again and I really enjoy that. That's totally cool. But then you had people go to one extreme. I hear people like comparing it to like, it was like Paul Thomas Anderson uses facial features so well in his film. <laughs> and like the way it's turning into the CGI uh, bringing back actors, we're going to lose that. It's like, no, we're not. This is an isolated instance in a fucking Star Wars show doing something pretty cool with Mark Hamill and Luke Skywalker, the character. That's all it is. It's supposed to be a fun little moment for people to enjoy, and we can't can't even do that. I am frustrated. It's like Paul by... Thomas Anderson isn't going to in his next movie is going to be like, hmm, wow, I'm going to do a CGI Mark Hamill now. It's like, no, it's not going to change anything. Right, but Star Wars used to okay, so it's always been cutting edge technology when it comes to Star Wars, and I think this is another example of that. Regardless of what you think of the show or the story that it's trying to tell. That CGI was very impressive to me. But I do understand people's frustrations with the nostalgia. It's been six years that Disney has been running Star Wars, and they can't break out of this storyline. You had one chance to make Mm -hmm. Luke Skywalker cool. Whatever you feel about (laughs) The Last Jedi, they blew it. Even though I like his ending, I like what he does, the nonviolence, becoming that pure Jedi, inspiring the, the resistance to fight once again, inspiring people all over the galaxy. But up until that point, he's a whiny, annoying little bitch. Dude, I just re-watched. You could have made him awesome. Yeah. You could have still kept all of his reservations about the Jedi and that he's a changed man and he's more pessimistic, but you still could have made him cool. And they didn't. And now they're trying to... These scenes, they don't do much for me besides me admiring the the special effects. Yeah, and I thought it was cool. I like, like I rewatched the original trilogy and my main takeaway was like... <sighs> Luke kind of sucks, but like I still love Luke. Like, I still love the character for some reason. Would you be interested in a Luke Skywalker origin series before a new <laughs> his yes. life on Tatooine being sexually repressed? <laughs> <laughs> Bullseye womp rats. But, like these moments, like the like even though you guys didn't like the Mandalorian and like that that whole sequence, like I just thought that was fucking cool. Because all, all I want to do, I liked it. I just thought it, he hijacked it. And brute and kind of nah, I guess yeah, just, sure. And like, I guess if you want to like show, argue right? like the storytelling basis or like, it made how, me feel like I watched that for no reason, just to have Luke come back. And I don't think Mando's like that was intended to be put there, so so we can argue about Last Jedi Luke versus Luke from the original. No, trilogy. they put it in there cl- solely to uh, uh, for make entertainment. Look, yeah, for entertainment for the for the older heads. And why can't we show? just accept that instead of turning it into something completely different? Or why can't you just make it Mando's show? Well, now it is you Star Luke Wars. Back. I don't care about Boba Fett. He can kick rocks for all I care. <laughs> it's the only reason why I was going to watch right, it. It's because Mandalorian em- was in an episode. And but that's why it's embarrassing. That's the only reason why you watch it. It's embarrassing because they realize that nobody cares. It's like they realize in the middle of their show, oh, nobody gives a fuck about this anymore. Let's just do a Luke thing. It's just... W- w- oh, it's strange. You can literally it's watch episode shit. episode five and six without... You could just get filled in on what happened with Boba Fett. There's, you know, he's sitting on Jabba's throne and some bad guys want to take the throne. Although I did love that Clone Wars cameo they had at the end of episode six. <laughs> to me, that was a, that was a great scene. Is that I really all that such a weird that, place. Like, do people just want to take away the throne. Like, I can just like know that and go into five and six. Pretty yes, much. seriously. There's going to be a battle. There's a yeah. syndicate that's channeling, that's challenging Boba Fett's reign 
they want to run no, like, drugs story through Tatooine. Like, there's no story that's like a like forwarding. You, you see what happened with Boba Fett that he you know he lived with the the Sand People. And yeah, he became a better fighter. I'm to fall back into that pit this time for real. The pit was actually pretty nasty. I mean, but it's such a uh, weird... even like Fennec, um, his his partner, yeah, Ming Na Wen's character. I can't I can't even remember her name. It, it, she's just there to look cool, and she yeah. does love Ming Na Wen, but <laughs> it, it just sucks. I'm in a weird place as a fan because like I hate shit like that, but I also love shit like that. It's 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 weird, weird time to be a Star Wars fan. Let's move on to the U.S. weekend box office. Let's talk about a movie that has been uniting the country, um, and Moonfall? really just uniting people worldwide. I might see this tonight. Jackass Forever, yeah, coming in at number one over the U.S. weekend box office with twenty three point five million. Uh, Moonfall came in at number two with ten million. <laughs> I actually saw that yesterday. Why? <laughs> yeah. Really? Well, I got to use that Regal membership for something. See Jackass. Number three is Spider Man No Way Home came in at nine point six million. I am going to see Jackass soon. Number four was Scream coming in with four point seven million, and Sing Two. Wow. Chipping away there with 4.1 million. I have Fios, and that just pops up on my home screen every time I turn on the TV. <laughs> Sing 2? Yeah. I've never seen Sing, Sing 1. one. You wow. do? That's funny, Sing 1. <laughs> it came out before Rocket Man, one. and Joel Edgerton <laughs> plays a character who sings yeah. I'm Still Standing. He plays the... Uh, Taron Edgerton. He plays the gorilla. What did I say? <laughs> I was going to say, wow, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that now. I think Joel Edgerton is talented enough to pull that off. <laughs> Is it? Well, he's coming back for the Luke Skywalker origin series. Make it a musical. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. Tatooine. Uh, <laughs> written by Lin Manuel. <laughs> written by Spielberg. Lin- Yo, it was so <laughs> written by Squidward. Did you see the Neptune oh. Frost? <laughs> Wait, say that. Again? Did you get to see Neptune Frost? No, I fucking miss. I miss my window on Neptune Frost, dude. You, I think you would fuck with that movie a lot because it's like it's super. It's just a wild ride. It's fun. It's like. It's definitely something like fr- refreshing, like to say the least. But like, it's a kind of this sci-fi futuristic. Uh, yeah, it sounded amazing. It's it was a musical. So I wasn't pissed. expecting it to be a musical. It was one of those movies where I was definitely lost a lot, and I really couldn't follow the narrative. Which I don't know if, if you can, but like, so I gave it like a. You know, it wasn't like my favorite movie, but it, like if I, I feel like if I watched it again and really connected with it, it could be because it was just that, like, just fun. Like well, not fun, but like such a different viewing experience and so like i give my rating go on letterbox looking at reviews and the first one of the reviews i saw was like something along the lines i was so happy to watch a refreshing musical without having to see like anything it's like then i looked at the producers and it's lin-manuel miranda (laughs) yeah it's funny because i i now it's it's i'm remembering seeing on twitter somebody saying oh you know it's a it's a musical and then somebody brings up, yeah, but it's produced by Lin Manuel. And he then they were like, no, he has every musical. <laughs> They're like, apparently he just funded it and had no creative input. So. Okay. And the person was like, oh, I'll take your word it's like for it. Like the past it. four musicals that I watch, like Encanto, like Tick Tick Boom, like that's just Lin Manuel. Yeah, it's just Lin Manuel. Hey, he's the modern day uh, Bernstein in that regard. Good for him, right? I don't know why he keeps making those sexy selfie faces though. I uh, fuck with it. <laughs> yeah, I fuck with the confidence. You know what? More men making sexy faces and selfies. Uh, if you guys didn't hear about this, this Pop is of my story, and I'm hitting one of these. <laughs> Interesting little tidbit here about No Way Home, and it's just it is on pace to pass Avatar at the U.S. domestic box office. So it it currently has a total of seven hundred and forty nine million. Uh, and ticket sales in the U.S., so it's one million shy of Avatar's total. So, just goes to show that Avatar made a shit ton in other countries. <laughs> and maybe if you know, normal times comes out in China, maybe uh, Force Awakens is still number one, right? Yeah, Force Awakens made a fucking billion, which is insane. And I think What's Black Panther is two, like, like total, like uh, up, like year to date, Look, last week, up to right now. Yeah, yeah, up to right now. Yeah, uh, the global total How for Spider Man is one point seven billion. How long has it been? It's close to 1.8. About a, mo- a little over a month. Wow, that was a month ago. Yeah. Dude, Spider-Man got close to 2 billion. It's literally only like 200 million shy. Yeah. Yeah, normal times, this is making over two. Definitely at the Chinese box office. I want to see Jackass, but I want to see like... I, really I need, want to see good, need a good too. crew to go with. Yeah. yeah you can't go, I can't I, go I, by I, myself. And I can't just go with Elena. She no, we should funny. do the, the nerd suit Jackass. Let's go see Jackass. Yeah. You guys want to go soon? Tomorrow? Tonight? I'm down tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I'd be I'd be down. What's tomorrow? Tuesday? I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, dep- it's going to depend on you. I'm down. Yeah. Okay. I'll only have to work till 8. I'll go after work. Like from 2.30 to 8 o'clock, I'd go. Done. 
I can see Moonfall by myself, not Jackass. Actually, no. I actually, as much as I didn't like the movie, I was happy to be in a theater watching a movie. Yeah. I was just like, this isn't so bad that I'm mad that I'm here. I'll be one of those. It's a shitty movie. No, it's a shit movie, but it wasn't a movie that was just so just egregiously bad. It was just... <laughs> How was the crowd live? No, it was like me and seven other people. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny. I laughed. As, I can't remember what the joke was, but I, I laughed so loud. I basically did one of those. And I was like, these people must think I'm such a fucking nerd that I'm loving this movie. Because John Bradley was hamming it up. He was the best part of the movie. Not not many good parts, but he was funny. He was a good supporting comic relief character, and he made a joke. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, these people probably think I'm some fucking loser having well, the man, time of my comedy. life. <laughs> <laughs> you shut up, man. It's comedy. All right, let's move on to the next story. That's the U.S. Weekend box office. Let's talk Madam Web. Dakota Johnson has joined Sony's Spider-Man spinoff movie that will be focusing on the character of Madam Web. I don't know much about the character of Madam Web. I even texted our Spider-Man aficionado, right. Marissa, and she didn't know jack shit about Madam Web. She, you know, she knew the name. I feel so much better that I'm not. I'm clueless on Madam Web. This is a deep um, cut. Thank God. And, uh, it's a character who has been changed. I think originally she was like this psychic multiverse presence old woman. Like she like Spider-Man. connects to all the spider people. Right. I guess oh, she is. She's I know got, Madam like, Web is. She had an episode. <laughs> of course, yeah. Bringing it back to the show. She had an episode in, in the show with the multiverse when they all, when all the spider man fought. Oh, I see you. You have more Madam Web Kick knowledge than Marissa. Marissa. Yeah. No. I should have texted you. I remember that they all like converged together with Madam Web to go fight uh, Peter Parker's, like in the universe that we're watching. They all converged to fight his his enemies. Okay, so it's almost like a Sinister Six type yeah. of situation. Yeah. yeah. I was watching a like a video on the silhouettes in. Let me look. Let me look her no up. Way home. Sure and I'm pretty sure there was one of her. Interesting. Maybe. I was trying to get a better look on my second watch, and I couldn't see anyone. It's interesting. I mean, like, Coda Johnson, especially after Sundance, like, she's just, uh, her past few yeah, projects have just been fucking fantastic. And, like... Let me see. Okay, yeah, I think that they're going to change the character in yeah, recent maybe versions. Yeah, not as old. Yeah, she's younger. When you when I read, when I first read Madame Web, I thought it was, uh, like, Aunt May. <laughs> like, from Spider-Verse. Like, Aunt May is, like, with, like, she's, like, into it. Maybe she's she a spider bit. person? Yeah, maybe, maybe she gets bit. <laughs> I wouldn't hate that. that. That has to be something that happened in the comics. Every person has been Spider-Man at one point or the other in the <laughs> Marvel know. Cinematic Universe. I mean, the Marvel Comics Universe. But she is younger in a different one. Like, they did a side-by-side with the, another one. Right, yeah. Now, obviously, that's going to be the... <laughs> gonna knock before this. you break my laptop. <laughs> gonna uh, that's obviously going to be the character Dakota, Dakota Johnson is playing. Yeah. Yeah. That's like the, kind of the, uh, the avenue a lot of people go, right? Like, they do, like, they're... They build up the resume with some great performances and some great movies, and you know, get the bad from Sony or Marvel. But I wish it <laughs> was you see for her Cohen's sake, Marvel, quote? not Sony. Yeah, that is true. It's going to be a Sony production, so we don't know how it's going to cross over with the MCU if it will cross over. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I saw this uh, Cohen for the uh, quote from the Cohen brothers, where you know Joel was. <laughs> It's like I was afraid one day Ethan was gonna like take on an uh, an incredible Hulk movie, and I'd find him on set with the chain, and he'd be like, "Daddy's got to eat." <laughs> 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 so you know, Dakota Johnson, Mama's got to eat. Got to eat. Mama can't be eating on off of all those Sundance independent cha cha real smooths. Or am I okay? Yes, but I would be better with some money from Sony. Could be better with some Bitcoin. Um. So yeah, she's a star. I think that a lot of people are realizing that similar to the Twilight situation with Pattinson and Stewart where initially people associated her with those god-awful movies. I've never seen them, so I can't even judge her performance in them. Uh, I remember she was often criticized and not being very charismatic, but I think that was uh, you know, just, just her Kristen finding her same way. Exact thing. Right, right, exactly. I think with Dakota Johnson, too, a lot of her charisma comes from this sort of awkward place where it, it's charming but reserved. Uh, I think Suspiria was probably like the first time I was like, actually being like oh fuck yeah yeah no definitely the, for me too because I hadn't seen her in much before that and I only knew the you know the Fifty Shades of Grey movies so mm. that blew me away her performance in that was unbelievable crazy to think too like Kristen Stewart all the buzz after Spencer and she's probably just not gonna even get a nomination maybe at this point I can't believe that I, I don't know maybe people just don't like the movie and they're holding it against her really but like it seemed other. like it was like a sure thing yeah, we talked about it, like, though, 
I think a month ago with Dakota Johnson now, like with her, her past year was phenomenal. Kristen Stewart with Spencer, Pattinson's Batman, Jamie Cornyn, fucking great performance in Belfast. Like, yeah, these people who had like these early career roles that like we <laughs> talk about like bringing it back to Star Wars because why everything I, I connect to Star Wars. Like uh, Hayden Christensen, kind of the same thing though. Like popular movie, terrible performer, or like just not the right role for him. And look what happened after that with him. And you're kind of seeing an opposite trend with them. And that's yeah, good yeah. to see. People did not give him the benefit of the doubt when it came to those movies. <laughs> they held him responsible. Right. I don't think I've ever seen a movie with Hayden Christensen in it without. You seen besides, Jumper? Besides uh, Star Wars. Have you ever seen Jumper? You ha- that has to be one of your favorite movies. Is Jumper when he goes like in, like time travel? Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> Love it, right? You've also seen Takers. <laughs> no, no, no. With Ti. No. Oh my God! I w- damn, that was Hayden. Yeah, this is the move that many actors have made. Go on to the superhero movies. Directors hate them, but actors like like I said, I take the back. Absolutely. I feel like the directors secretly. Ah. If someone told you, I feel like that's a, that's a con. Oh yeah, no, they're just mad that they're it's not like, oh, making that money. Oh, I hate. Uh, I'll never do a Marvel movie. <laughs> you can't not do a Marvel Maybe movie. Maybe I'll do a Marvel year. movie. I was on a. If I told you, home, if I told you, you can take. You're an actor, and I say, do this superhero big blockbuster. You're gonna suck in it, but you're gonna make the bag, and you won't get like you can get looked at like horrible for the rest of like your career. Are you doing it? You're making a bag though. No, I'd rather take the 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 proper route to the bag, where I just take a chance on a role that I believe in. I'm selling. I don't want out. the guaranteed money. I'm selling out. <laughs> I actually just watched a movie about a guy who's being pulled between a director who wants to stay faithful to the source material <laughs> and an American producer who's just all about the money. It's pretty funny. But I was talking to uh, Andres the other day on Discord, and we were talking about who we would love to see make a Spider-Man movie, and he suggested Spielberg. And we both just like came at the same time, imagining the web swing. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, imagine the web swinging in a Spielberg Spider-Man movie, man. That would put every Spider-Man... We wouldn't be able to watch Spider-Man movies anymore. That man's imagination. Yeah. 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 Oof. I think that... I honestly would love Spielberg for Spider-Man 4. I'm going to start pushing that on the podcast. I think that that's a legend that fits so well with that character. And I think he would do such a good job with a more mature, college-aged Peter Parker. Um, and I think Spielberg would do it. Spielberg loves superhero movies, man. I think that if any has... studio can get him to do a superhero movie, mm-hmm. it would be Feige. Right. Because he's, he's collaborative. Spielberg isn't like, I have to do everything. He's got his crew. He's got his writers. I was going to say, Spielberg well. comes with a... With he a, dips like his toe a... in everything. He really likes... I mean, dude just fucking did a musical, and it was like, everyone loved it. That's what, it was like a remake. The, the visuals in that musical, it may... You could argue it's his best directed movie. In all seriousness. Really? Yes. Produced by Lin-Manuel Miranda. Produced by Lin-Manuel Miranda. Let's move on to the next story. We have Scream 6 is going to start filming this summer. This is a franchise that just doesn't give up. Didn't even go to the Spielberg story. That's uh, actually, yeah, no, I could have transitioned to the Spielberg story. Wow, that's a bad, that was a bad mess up by me. (laughs) Hey, I didn't host last week. I got to shake the rust off here. Going to scream. <laughs> Good old ghost face. It's actually going to be directed by die. Steven Spielberg. No, it's not. Do you mean Chazelle? <laughs> um, I know Aaron's very excited for this. Uh, I feel like t- this is the last thing Scream needed was like to have like a good feedback for this one. So now they're just not going to stop. Well, they've all been to an extent critically acclaimed. Everyone has their different orders of how they rank them, but... I think it is a movie that I just want to see keep yeah, coming out. I, yeah, I, I, I'll keep seeing it. I'm I not, want the I'm same premise <laughs> every single time. I, yeah. I love it. You, st- you just tweak it a bit. You just yeah, tweak it. It's a high school. It's a group of high schoolers whose friend wants to become famous by doing the screen mask, <laughs> and that's it. We got to figure out who it is. Yeah, yeah. We got to figure it out. Yeah, it's like playing Clue with the buddies. Just, uh, just now shy away from Dewey's house. Not Dewey's house. Uh, the house that this all happened. Woodsboro. In. Yeah. Right. Just shot. No, but yeah, you keep it in Woodsboro, but get away from like that. I don't know what like. So I was watching storyline. I was watching Twenty One Jump Street and like, and even Twenty Two Jump Street, even more so. But those are movies that are very, very self-aware mm-hmm. and reference what they're doing. I don't know why it didn't bother me in those, and I love those movies. But in Scream, it just for some reason just got too much for me at a time. You definitely need to go rewatch the originals. Maybe. You probably have a better appreciation for it. That's true. Because you'll find it funny how similar they are. 
I do like, be like, oh, this again. But also some of the, like, I, I love the new one, but I think visually a lot of the kills in especially Scream 2 are very well directed. Ghostface is a horrifying pres- presence in those first two Scream movies. And I think he was Scary horrifying in this one, too. Him for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, but it when you makes see the way he, funny, like the I, way he stalks them in those earlier screen movies is so scary. Yeah. The way he brutalizes them with that knife, it's just something about being stabbed. It's icky. I mean, they brought that back in this one. And he's the stabbing the fuck out of people. This one yeah, was pretty he was uh, stabbing. ruthless. Franchise is not going away. So I mean, this in. man, this man yeah. went two knives in the in the sheriff and like ripped up her neck. <laughs> All right, now let's move on to the final story of the podcast. David Lynch joins Steven Spielberg's The Fablemans in a secret role. This was awesome when I saw this on Twitter. I immediately texted my cousin who loves David Lynch, and he hates Spielberg. So he's like, oh, this is the only way I'd watch a Spielberg movie. (laughs) Um, But The Fablemans is obviously going to be a semi-autobiographical tale about Spielberg's early life. Um, It's it's got a stacked cast. Michelle Williams, Seth Rogen, Paul Dano, Judd Hirsch, Julia Butters, a bunch of other actors as well some newcomers um apparently gabriel labelle will be playing sammy fableman who is the inspiration for spielberg that's he's supposed to be a young spielberg okay um and the lynch role a lot of speculation it's being closely guarded which is hilarious but uh the prevailing theory is that he will be playing legendary director john ford Mm. who spielberg was very influenced by and actually met when he was 15 years old and you know their, their encounter the encounter that they had is pretty funny and apparently ford was a a wacky guy, kind of unconventional personality. That's interesting. Because, yeah, unconventional, you got the right man. But I want him to play Ford as David Lynch, though. <laughs> well, Lynch is... David uh, Lynch playing. Right, yeah, he's just... <laughs> him as David Lynch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's an interesting collaboration because I think Spielberg loves David Lynch movies, but I can't imagine that Lynch has any Spielberg movies that he holds dear to his heart. Um, no, I do feel like Jurassic Park. With the more like the directors like David Lynch, yeah, Lynch loves Park. Jurassic Park, <laughs> aren't like mainstream. Like they have a certain like to like general audiences, but like are well established within uh, like the film community. Yeah, your favorite director's favorite director, right? Yeah, and I do, I do think like they have appreciations for those type of films. Like if you hear Lynch talk about Star Wars, like obviously that was he was. They wanted him to go for, to do uh, Return of the Jedi, right? Yeah. And it's just like not his thing. Like I just even though like with doing and everything, and he saw how that played out. Um, but I think for him, it's more of like I think he definitely appreciates the craft and like how you know what Spielberg's able to do, even with the Jurassic Parks and uh, the Ready Player Ones that he creates. Right. There's just no chance that David Lynch has ever seen Ready Player One. <laughs> <It's> probably, <laughs> what if that's like one of his favorites? <laughs> no, he's like, um, he. I could see him enjoying Jaws. That's easily right. his favorite Spielberg movie. Um, and like, obviously with Schindler's List, the more like, you know, something not at like different from the blockbuster the Jurassic Park right more serious and more I guess uh, prestige film if you will apparently they had an interaction once where David told uh, Lynch told Spielberg thousands of people like the things that I love but millions of people like the things that you love I wish more of those people like my things and Spielberg answered with I think there's this equal amount of people who love Eraserhead now that love Jurassic Park and I thought that was sweet of Spielberg Spielberg I have my problems with the way he's made movies in the last 20 years, but he's such a humble dude. For for the genius that he is, to be as acclaimed as he, he is, is yeah. to be such a sweetheart, to always, you know, give credit to other filmmakers, and like I said, just to be a humble guy, he's awesome. So, I think this has potential. At first, I was like, oh, this is self-indulgent, huh? <laughs> but, you know, uh, what's his face? Kenneth Branagh did something similar with Belfast. You know, directors have done this in the past. They make movies that are versions of their childhoods, and you can get really good stories out of that. No, definitely too. Like I think Belfast, like that's an interesting period of history. Oh yeah, yeah. That it's also got the fascinating history there mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, it's funny in the script. That's so I'm begging these three chicks. He's he makes himself like this huge player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Spielberg's all of a sudden he's just awesome. So <laughs> still the Clint, Clint Eastwood as a threesome. <laughs> <sighs> Um, yeah, it's not the first time that he's the like, close encounter high school. <laughs> a lot of people speculate that that's supposed to be his, you know, it's like this therapeutic movie that he made about his father, the relationship that he had with his father. So it's it's not like his personal life hasn't influenced his movies before. 
Yeah. Um, I also love the joke in Peacemaker when they're interrogating the butterfly, and he's like, "Are you here to play us a dumb song like in Close Encounters?" Uh, <laughs> Peacemaker's great, by the way. I can't wait to review it. It is so good. Are you on that yet, Teddy? No, dude, you gotta get on. You're gonna fucking love that show. I know. I just watched an interview with him and Jimmy Fallon. Vigilante is he looks so funny. In it. <laughs> Vigilante may be the greatest character ever. So he, did a, he did an interview too? with Jimmy Fallon in his peacemaker costume. What did he say? Thurston over Vigilante. Everyone's very Thurston over Vigilante. <laughs> he shows up. Cena to me, I, I don't have enough enough good things to say about him. I think he's a star. He's found his role, and I wouldn't mind if he keeps going back to it. If this is the movies and stories that he makes, it's like I want The Rock to be our modern day Schwarzenegger. R-rated gritty stories, yeah. but Cena, I think this works for him. It does. Characters like Peacemaker, Stallone. <laughs> we got Stallone and Schwarzenegger, part two. Right, but yo, like The Rock. The yeah, Rock the only needs to make is The Rock and see Cena at WrestleMania too. Yeah, they have a little wow. rivalry, right? Yeah, I was watching The Rock's funniest moments in WWE, and he was <laughs> shitting on Cena in one of them. You can't see me. My favorite video of The Rock will always be when he told Stone Cold to shut up, bitch. <laughs> no one can cut a promo like The Rock. Yeah, you know, dude. Yeah. That back man, in, his mic those, skills. Back in those days, he would... He made WWE, dude. Well, that's why when he and Tyrese <laughs> had that beef, those Tyrese diss videos yeah. he used to make were brutal, bro. But like, this is like, he's like talking to a little kid, and he's like, oh, so what do you think about them? Look, I was like, it doesn't matter yeah. what you <laughs> <laughs> Shaq just did that to The Rock the other day, dude. He was at, right, Shaq asked The Rock about the show coming up. He's like, I don't give a damn about the show. <laughs> As The Rock was in the middle of talking. Because he's like just such, like, his his persona right now is just like total line. Yeah. Like, he's kind of robotic. He's likable, but he's very... Wait, who? The Rock. It seems like a lot of things are put through, like, he has a team of people that go through everything Dude, he says. Dude, that's why like, like, it bugs me because it feels like every movie he makes is just a commercial for The Rock TM, The Rock trademark, The Rock brand. What am I selling? What products am I trying to get you to buy? That's all he does on Instagram, dude, is fucking promote himself. I it's want The big... Rock to be just, what he was in Fast Five was the best Rock we've ever gotten. And, then, and he has he doesn't go back to that. Yeah, but the character, like, from his WWE days are just, is fucked. Well, he was a heel, right? Yeah. He was a mix of both. Like he would, that's what he should be on the yeah. big screen. Is he's trying to be America's uncle? Wait, was America's it true, Daddy? Was it true? I don't know if it was a rumor or not. Like maybe it was just a joke. Then I got caught up in it. Uh, that he has in his contract that he can't be a bad guy. And or that's he, why Black he Adam can't lose a fight. Like Black Adam was supposed to like is a, a this really bad villain, and he's like not going to be that dark. No, I think that's that's not in this contract, but that is a rock thing. And I also think that's something that's, you know, the character has evolved in recent years in the comics, becoming more of an anti-hero. But the rock, I don't think he, yeah, he, he there was no way he was going to play that character as a straight villain. I think he'll have some villainous aspects to him, without a doubt, yeah. just based on that first trailer. But he's better as an anti-hero. Well, like, well, Vinny has... That's what he is in Fast Five, in my opinion. He's just douchebag cop. Obviously, with a heart of gold, but he's yeah. got you know he's got to learn some things here he to trust like his family, and not because he was a wrestler, but he needs like a wrestler. If that makes sense, not in the yes. sense yeah, of yeah, like yeah. Mickey Rourke, like his comeback, like he's already the Rock, but like or a, a down to earth, gritty movie about something that he knows a lot about that can really, really capture and like ingratiate himself into a role that's like a serious fucking down movie. Yeah, or or a Rambo, <laughs> blood. Bullets, The Rock just choking people, the life out of people, smashing skulls. Mm. Like when he grabbed the axe in Skyscraper, I was like, yo, we about to see Rock axe some people? And he just like threw it at an elevator door. <laughs> and it just like opens the door. Whatever. Rock about to axe a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to fan questions. That's for the fan to decide. Yay! People, you call up to the show, you better be ready. That's what you're supposed to do. Sitting there arguing and trying to spell your name and all of this other stuff. It's not your show, it's my show. I'm giving you the, the opportunity to speak your mind. Don't call up here unless you got something to say. This question here from Nick Lester. Thoughts on Attack on Titan being being the greatest story ever told? Hmm. Yeah, Ted, why don't you... Uh... <laughs> well, in my... You're not getting any fear of missing out here? Eh. I have enough to catch up on. It all depends on how it ends, right? Like, that's any story, it's only... only as, I don't want to say you're only as good as your ending, but, I mean, you see with Game of Thrones, like, just going from arguably top five to just... For me, it's, like, still one, but... Um, but, like, for people just not even considering it as, like, 
a top show, even though like if you take it as a whole and compare it like those, some of those earlier seasons, it definitely, you definitely can, but like an ending has plays a huge part in how people perceive your story as a whole. Look at star Wars. If rise of Skywalker was phenomenal, that changes the way people look at the whole trilogy and it wasn't. So now it's just kind of, you know, mid. <laughs> I didn't hear anything you said. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, that's good, good stuff. Good time to put that in there. Did you say mid like seven times or did you just say once? No, that's the first one. I was just waiting for a uh, reaction. I've said this on previous podcasts, but I've maintained that the Attack on Titan ending ending, as in the fir- like the final panels, yeah. are, are prob- I had problems with that. Right. But getting there, and we've seen it uh, since the show came back, that week to week... Mm. It's been just a fucking visual feast. I, and also from a narrative standpoint, people are getting their minds are getting fucking blown every week. I wouldn't like be surprised if I just if it's the same and like I just had a different perspective on it because of like just experiencing it through, through animation a, through a different medium. And like, you know, it's just it's, I don't know. We'll that see, last episode we'll see man. When it gets there. But like, I think at times like maybe it's maybe not the tightest story of all time. It's definitely good, like and fucking intriguing, and but the way they're able to kind of introduce things and ex- expand from a episode to episode basis in a way that's like you're never like, okay, this is too much, like all right, we get it, like you don't have to, you kind of like snowballing into a point where you just keep going and going and going and going, and eventually it's nothing like where you started. Like it, it does a great job of expanding, but still being true to what it that uh, what it is, and that's very difficult to do. Well, I mean, obviously we don't know what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks, but they're doing the Daenerys Mad Queen storyline so much better than mm-hmm. Game of Thrones did, uh, and it's it's like, <laughs> where after that last episode, I was like, yeah, go destroy the world, bro. Go take these motherfuckers out. Well, I'm you all have time <laughs> and development and just things you're able to do through anim. I'm not even gonna say only through animation because you can do it in a live action, but you just need the time and you know that has to be your most important. Like that has to be your main focus, and you have to really be convincing when you attack that. And they're doing it very, 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 very well. Like going back to just like I like Breaking Bad. I think is probably still like the tightest story. I just finished rewatching it, watching El Camino again too, which it's still good. But like just Breaking Bad as it's as it's those five seasons from top to bottom are just I don't know. I don't think there's a. a a seamless television show out there as Breaking Bad is. Yeah, I feel like um, maybe if they did sort of like a prequel to Breaking Bad that focused on one of the more interesting characters, one of the more interesting side characters. The lawyer, um, maybe? Yeah, and possibly make him even even, even more complex character than Walter White. Uh, but I, I don't know. <laughs> Why do that? <laughs> yeah, I thought you, you're supposed to be the Breaking Bad guy. You haven't even touched the show. I know. With Aaron, I can give him a pass because he's got too much world history. I dropped the ball on Better Call Saul. I don't have space in my brain for much. <laughs> you need to buy a brain SSD. <laughs> yeah, I need an external hard drive. That's gonna it's <laughs> gonna cost you some money. This question here from Homero. How excited are you for the best Batman? <laughs> well, that's a prediction. It's we were talking about it before the pod. I'm fucking I can't wait. I can't believe that's less than a month away. It doesn't feel like we're gonna get tickets. Was like it March fourth? Oh, oh shit. March fourth it comes out? March third. Oh. But, but like the official is March fourth, so yeah, less than a month. I said that the other day to one of my friends, and he was like, it's March 3rd. Are you even a Batman fan? (laughs) That was actually Andres. I don't get it. Andres always questions my Batman fandom just to fuck with me, because he knows I love Batman. But now the Thursday, it's like now they're doing like 4 o'clock showings. Like, just it's March 3rd. But they still It's become Black Friday, where it used to be midnight shopping. Now it's stores open at 5. I I respect it. (laughs) I, I used to love going to the movie theaters Thursday at midnight, man. You kidding? That's I, miserable. It was fun. We all were like, so that's how I did the Dark Knight. The, the, we did Man of Steel, right? Midnight? Was that midnight? Did we do Man of Steel midnight? No, I don't think. No way Teddy did Man of Steel at midnight. That was I a didn't different that. Ted. Um, that was a different Ted. But yeah, <laughs> if and you the guys... midnight ones are like, but you don't just do it for everybody. Like, I'll see, you know, any Thursday showing if I'm just want to go see it. But like, the midnight ones, those are the ones that like, I can't wait. I have to see it on Thursday. So, yeah. And I think there's, I mean, listen. Everything I've seen from the trailers, from the images, tells me that this is going to be a b- good movie. It could come out and be terrible. Pattinson could be unconvincing in the role. If He doesn't have to be the best Batman. He really doesn't. How about you uh, just not put that in the universe? How's that sound? Well, I, just I, like I, me saying Lord of the Rings is going to suck. It's also... 
everything I'm hearing from him about Batman makes me think he's going to be a good Batman. I don't think a character has ever had the respect for the character, maybe Conroy, uh, that Pattinson has showed, where he, he fully understands what the character is and what's the interesting aspects that they that fans want to see tackled on the big screen and I think a lot of those aspects are things that we haven't seen on the big screen yet for the character of Batman even though we've had versions of him that I think continue to get better going from Keaton to Bale to Affleck who I consider to be the best but I want Conroy in live action I want the animated Batman because he's still the best fucking Batman and I think this will be the closest to that I think Pattinson is going to be like the best mentally like like we'll, we'll see the best mental state in Batman Right, I want to see him out. So. I want that moment where he beats the Riddler to be bone chilling, like he didn't beat him with his fists. He just outthought this. He outthunk this motherfucker. You know, needs some thinking. <laughs> That's why I love um, Rogue Nation so much because it's the moment where he memorizes all the codes, and he's like, "We, you know, we destroyed the file. I just have it in my head." I was like, "Oh." <laughs> That's some shit you'd see like the Justice League Batman, like the, the Yo, TV show. Justice League Batman was nice, man. <laughs> That, yeah. Is that Conroy too? Yeah. It is him? And he's in the games. Is he really? The Arkham he's games? He's the best Batman. He's got the best Batman stories. He does. Arguably the best movie, Fa- Mask of Phantasm. He doesn't have to do a voice. He doesn't have a Batman voice. He just has the it's voice. It's just his voice, right. He's just got the perfect voice. No voice mod. Gets the right pitch. and then, But like that voice, it's Bruce Wayne and Batman. Like there's no... Well, even when he does the Bruce Wayne, he puts a little uh, like uh, like a uh, charisma to his voice. Like he's almost singing. He's very like, oh, hello there, Gordon. Or when he's hosting parties at his mansion, he becomes the billionaire playboy. Mm-hmm. And then he changes like, he's just the modu- like, and it's just monotone. Perfect. Yeah. No. Nope. And he can sing. If you guys don't get me a ticket, this friendship's done. So just know that. This question here from Pinstripe Diva. If Scorsese were to direct a superhero film, what would you want it to be? The Joker. <laughs> Deadpool. <laughs> um, The Joker. I hate to say it, like, I mean, just Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a Batman Scorsese detective movie would be, uh, that's his be- best suited for that. I See, think I, he'd do Deadpool the best. When I think of Scorsese... I can't ever imagine him doing a superhero movie. That's why the the idea of Spielberg doing Spider-Man, it, it feels like something that Spielberg would be interested in doing. I don't think Scorsese has any interest in this. It'd be like if David Lynch had to do a superhero movie. It's just, they're so far apart mm-hmm. from ever happening that I it's hard for me to... A Scorsese, like, I don't know, a Penguin movie? Yeah. <laughs> It would have to be. It would have to be somebody like that. The Penguin origin yeah. movie. It would have to be like a side character that's getting their own movie that you can play with, and you know maybe anti hero esque because you know usually most of his characters in his films are anti heroes that you can delve into. You know not just good or evil, but just operate in a little gray area and make a compelling story out of. This question here from Maruthi underscore twelve Indian fan here. Have you seen any Indian movies? I can't say I've seen many. Uh, there've I've always wanted to get into the Bollywood blockbusters mm-hmm. because some of them seem just so far out there and enjoyable. Um, I've seen like the Apu trilogy, late 50s from Satyajit Ray. Um, and I've seen a couple of his movies as well, but there, there's too many damn movies out there. I know. <laughs> uh, but I know Bollywood. Bollywood is definitely something I've always said I wanted to get into, but I've just never done it. I haven't held myself uh, accountable. Next year's New Year's resolution. <laughs> yeah, next year, in 2023. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if, like, you know, because I think we've gotten more mainstream uh, projects from, you know, different uh, foreign uh, foreign language countries, like, even with, you know, like Squid Game or with Parasite. Like, I think I wouldn't be surprised if... That's that's the next country. At time, like some point next year, we get like this series or on Hulu, Netflix, whatever it may be, and it's like a like a Bollywood or Indian type series that comes out and kind of captures the people and like introduces them, like because K drama, like I didn't like I've no, I obviously like seen Korean films in the past and like we're familiar, but like I didn't really know the extent of how big like that K uh, drama genre is there. And just how many different films there are and how many different projects are being shown that are really good. And then, it, you know, it does take something like that or uh, for a lot of people, something that kind of breaks through what we're used to in uh, America that kind of captures audiences in a way that's like, oh, we, I want to seek out more of this. It was like Parasite for me. 
like two pods ago. <laughs> that, that is the funniest moment in the history of this podcast, man. And like, it, it, it really, <laughs> I love because you asking like, are, are there more parasites out there? <laughs> It's like, yes, Teddy. I felt like Willy Wonka. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, look behind me, Teddy. I just, just tried to show up as her first time. <laughs> just an infinite closet of all the great foreign movies. But it does feel like you can. It like, did, but in my defense, it did feel like Parasite was made in the U.S. Like, it was promoted. In, I didn't know that it was, like, a it foreign was, film. It was no, very... Yeah, yeah. I totally get what you're yeah. saying. <laughs> this question here from Eve were 13. Gandalf or Dumbledore? Gandalf. Dumbledore. In a fight, in a or fight, who's a better like character? Yeah. Oh, that's tough, then. I think that in a fight, Gandalf... I think the magic Gandalf is working with is just a little different. You ever get into an argument with somebody who, like, won't budge, but you know you're right? Yeah. What are you... <laughs> <laughs> are yeah, you fucking yeah. kidding me? I don't <laughs> know. Did you just point to me? No, I was like, both of you. Oh. <laughs> I was having a, it was really you funny, just, actually. I was having I an argument with push. somebody. It's like, it was Gandalf versus Superman. And I'm like, Superman would just fucking destroy it. And they just wouldn't fucking budge. And it was pissing me off because they don't know about Superman, but they love Harry Potter. And it was just Gandalf. Like, no, just oh, Gandalf. Oh, Dumbledore. Oh, yeah, Dumbledore, Dumbledore, Dumbledore. And I was just getting oh, so <laughs> frustrated. Where did come from? I'm like, do not... <laughs> Just didn't get it. Well, th- that's the thing. If you would take into account Superman's personality, Dumbledore's way more of a scumbag and willing to play dirty. So Superman always gives people the benefit of the doubt. The, I, if I could kill you already, Superman, if it's like yeah. bloodthirsty Superman, yeah, yeah he, he, he's just gonna, We saw it already. All he has to do is just run into people. You know? I know. <laughs> they could rest that concept. <laughs> like, like, just show them. Fast. He has heat show vision. That. I don't care. He's not going to Patronus fucking Superman. Show, show that person uh, is that Invincible. Did I use that? Yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, show them show them invincible. That's like a washed up Superman who doesn't even want to do it anymore. Uh like yeah, I think Gandalf like I think in terms of there's a better I argument like to be pa- made for character yeah. because Dumbledore yeah. may be the best character in the series, but Gandalf's right. a great character too. Power it's Gandalf, I think. Like I said, the magic in Lord of the Rings is a it's a it's like He's like kind of like a god, almost. It's like untapped power, and it's like extreme, very powerful. Yeah, I feel like Dumbledore's... I feel like Dumbledore's maxed out. Like, he'd be going to do a spell, and Gandalf would just, like, send him to a different dimension or something. <laughs> I don't know. It was one, it was fucking staff. Yeah, just something. Like, he'd die, and then he'd come back as, like, a phoenix. <laughs> like, Gandalf the phoenix. That's more of a Dumbledore. I know, yeah, steal his swag. <laughs> it's my power now, bitch. Fucking phoenix. What was that Chamber of Secrets when he brings him the hat? Yeah. <laughs> that was weird. That what was is it? The hat has a sword in it, right? Yeah. It's <laughs> another thing. Like a sword? I feel like a wand is more valuable than a sword. Yeah, she was uh, she was spitballing in those earlier movies. Hmm. All right, guys. That is the Nerd 2 <laughs> Podcast for today. We are wrapping up. We will be back later this week. We're bringing back Nash to sit in the host chair. We're going to be doing a preview. Are we even allowed to say the Super Bowl? Of big the game. big game. No, the no, big no. Big game I think 52. You could, say, you could say Super Bowl, but it can't be... A promotion for something else. Why? Uh, the the trademarks on that are yeah. Locked we can't down. use it to promote like anything. Mickey Mouse. To promote anything, but we can say it. So you're saying if l- let's say we had a even sports, though we are doing that right. Now. Let's say we had a sports podcast. We can't put on a no, thing, we, Super Bowl preview. No, but I don't think we could be like. I don't think. Pff, fuck. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. A non affiliated sponsor can be used. <laughs> like if Ritz Crackers was doing a thing. It's like, come get Ritz for your Super Bowl party. Right, yeah, you can't Ritz do that. Ritz couldn't use Super Bowl unless they have a deal with them. So, oh, you have, so you, can we do it to promote our Get ready our for the big game? Get some Ritz crackers. So I think can we, we do, do it for the game? I think we're so under the radar. <laughs> Goodell's going to knock on my door like <laughs> men in black. I'm waiting for the drone to come in. I feel in. like Goodell would... <laughs> give us a concussion. <laughs> no matter how insignificant you are, Goodell would still stomp you. Damn, we were making some good points in that video. Hey guys, Aaron and Nerd Suit Monkey here. Before we end this video, I want to give a quick shout out to our Patreon supporters. What can I say about you guys that I haven't already said about myself? You are the most important part of the channel and the main reason we keep going strong. Like Bo says, you keep the lights on in the fridge so the fridge is full. Or, or something like that. So, from everyone here at Nerd Soup, I'd like to thank you guys for your continued support. If you're interested in joining the ranks of our patron supporters, head over to patreon.com slash nerdsoup and check out the rewards we offer to our patrons. 
We recently dropped some new stickers for you guys to check out, or you could choose a tier that will allow you to select a movie, show, or video game for us to review. We've got a full slate of fan-suggested reviews coming your way, and we're really excited about the chance to review some of those movies and shows. We've also got t-shirts, mugs, behind-the-scenes videos showing how we bring our videos to life. And once again, thank you to all our Patreon pledgers who have been supporting us throughout the years. Without you, we wouldn't be able to convert all your pledges into cryptocurrency, so thank you from my future self for making us rich.